Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Zero Velocity. I'm your host, Brad Thorpe. Today we are talking isometrics for golf. Who doesn't love golf? Everyone loves golf. Who's kidding who? It's the number one pastime amongst active people over the age of five years old. How crazy is that? Golf is the second leading expense from a thing to do in the United States. A hobby, let's call it. It is a sport, but let's call it a hobby for a lot of people. Now, that's second to gardening, which is shocking. Now, if you see the sweat pouring down my head, right, that's because we just brought this beast of a machine in here. This is the Isofit Strength Trainer. This is the ultimate golf training tool for isometrics. Obviously, practice your golf swing. Practice golf. Play golf. But when it comes to training and performance, when it comes to maximizing strength, stability, explosive power, and rate of force development, there is nothing better than this machine. We can train every phase of golf on this product. We can train your cervical spine, your core, your arms, your legs. Now it's interesting, when you start to explore golf, there's so many different buzzwords. We got swing, posture, spine, hips, club, all this sort of stuff. It's crazy. Look how much stuff we talk about. But when we really are sort of looking at golf, what we really care about is having fun. Now here's an interesting quote that I saw, um, and it's going back all the way to the 1700s. So golf is an exercise which is much used by gentlemen in Scotland. Now it is obviously used by women around the world as well. A man would live 10 years the longer for using exercise once or twice a week, right? And that's Be Dr. Benjamin Rush, who lived from 1745 to 1813. They noticed way back then, golf can add years to your life, and they called it exercise. So because they call it exercise, now you're in my world when you're talking about performance. I'm not a golf expert, but I am an expert in exercise mechanics, muscle function, and most importantly, isometrics. Now, when we start to explore the golf swing, what we have to understand is there's many different phases, right? You have your address phase, you have your backswing, you have your downswing, and then you have your follow through. Those are your four key components. Now here we got some guy who's pretty good at golf, right? He wears a red shirt usually on his final day, arguably, the best golf athlete in the history of golf. That's good old Mr. Tiger Woods. I have no affiliation with Tiger, and to be honest, I stole this photo from Google this morning. But what I want you to understand is see how in this image, you have the backswing, you have the downswing, you have the follow through, all broken down strategically and isometrically. And the reason I say isometrically is because it is a static image. So when you start to address performance activities such as golf in segmental movement patterns, you can now identify and address all the muscle participations for each range of a golf swing. You can't do that with dynamic exercise. I'm really sorry you blow through it too fast to actually create any level of change in a meaningful time period. You know, you can take years or if you want to do some isometrics, you can probably address it within a day or two. That's how much faster and more efficient it is. Now, the cool thing is every phase of that range is isometric. It's just strung together. How do we know this? Well, I can look at another angle and you can sort of see all that backswing. So see in that very first photo to the left, see how Tiger Woods' cheek is relatively over his left shoulder. When you get further over to the right, you see how it's coming now to the midline. Now, if I change that position, now it's the continuation of that swing pattern. See how when he's in that final stance, that isometric stance at the very, very end? Because that's what it is in golf. You got to hold that position. His head is now clearly rotated to the right. How cool is that? So his body is kind of rotating underneath his cervical spine. That's crazy. So what I want to do today to address some of these really cool things with golf, because when you explore it, golf is the simultaneous pronation and supination of most joint surfaces, right? Your left side is internally rotating while your right side is externally rotating. And it just it transfers up. Now, if you got a stable pelvis, oh my God, your legs are going to perform better. If you have a stable pelvis, your spine is going to perform 
better. So today is gonna be an active learning lesson. So if you guys are listening to this on Spotify, jump over to isofitmedia.com so you can watch this episode because we are gonna demonstrate nine different exercises that are gonna help with strength, stability, and golf performance as well as injury reduction. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump back you know, on the Isofit Strength Trainer to show you some of these exercises. So the first one's gonna address hip stability. And to be honest, there's no other exercise product on the planet currently that can address these issues this fast in this amount of ease, right? And who doesn't want ease? So if you're a golf club out there, give me a call. You guys need several of these. It's a financial cash cow for your members and your bottom line. So let's look at this. So what we wanna do first, is you see these little holsters down here, they spin, they're pretty awesome. What we wanna do is, because we're addressing that backswing first, the left leg externally rotates, the right leg internally rotates. So from here, what I wanna do, because we are drawing attention to that glute medius muscle, that's the one that helps stabilize that pelvis and move the legs from internal to external rotation. So what I wanna do is just rotate those legs towards the left. Right, so that's gonna cause external rotation on the left side. It's gonna cause internal rotation on the right side. Now what I wanna do is I wanna hip abduct. I wanna drive those legs out. Now because we're looking at golf, right, and the rate of force development of golf is like within you know, less than a hundredth of a second, we're thinking, boom, let's move really quick. Now we're gonna address that in a second. We wanna address it in about 10 second intervals. So we're gonna drive out, so our goal is to enhance neural connection to those muscles and increase strength and stability within that structure. So 10 seconds, we're gonna relax. We're gonna do that 10 times each side, right? So that's gonna be exercise number one. Exercise number two is rotating the other way. Now, I would love to say that this is the same exercise just done in the opposite direction. But it is 100% different from a neurological perspective than going the opposite direction because your left leg is now turning in, your right leg is turning out. So it is different, so it needs to be addressed. So what you wanna do is just turn those legs out first, right? So you're turning them to the right and now you're gonna drive those legs out. 10 seconds. Now, remember I mentioned that rate of force development. So let's go back to exercise number one. Turn those to the left. What I want you to do is pulse and relax. Pulse and relax, pulse and relax, pulse and relax. So we're learning how to create massive amounts of force in a very, very brief amount of time in a very, very safe environment. So those are the first two exercises. The next exercise, what we're gonna do because we're worried about that backswing, so we're gonna spin that outside right holster. Now what I wanna do is drive both legs left, pressing up. Now this is where isofit is awesome. Because even, even if you're using a door frame or a power cage, it's pretty hard to maintain stability because as soon as you push that way, you're going to spin your body. So what I want you to do is I want you to hold here and you're going to press those legs to the left. So it's abduction on your left side, adduction on your right side. So working that simultaneous pronation and supination that is associated with golf. And then what we want to do, so exercise number four. So same repetition scheme and same pulse rate. And those pulses, we're doing just 10 reps as well. So here, drive those legs across, right? So that's gonna address, now that's, that's that four swing, or that down swing to follow through, right? So that's gonna help address that positioning. So I hope you guys are following me so far. We're trying to get through this fast. But what we wanna do now is go over to some torsion twists. And that's gonna address the core musculature. It's gonna help aid in spinal rotation and make trunk rotation safe and effective for you guys. So what we wanna do is drive. I'm just gonna change that position. We're gonna then lie down on our back and we are going to just make sure that's tight and engaged. So what I want you to do next is you're gonna bring, you're gonna lie up against the wall you're gonna bring your hip and knee to 90 degrees. Now what I want you to do is press your arm up. Now this arm I want sort of reaching up and across your body. Now what you can kind of see, I'm gonna have that elbow bent, right? Similar to a golf swing. And the key here is to drive that tibia through the wall, rotating, so it's not pull across your thigh, it's rotate your trunk. 
So what you're doing is pulling that arm across, rotate across. Now, if we wanted to get it really, really sort of golf specific, I can bring that down. So now what I'm doing is I'm learning how to approximate that arm coming across my body and drive across. Because you know a lot of people like to bend this arm because they don't have that strength and stability to pull it across. So that addresses all that. Now, for the sake of time, we're not going to do the other side. But what you would want to do is mirror this on the other side to make sure that body is symmetrical. OK, so what you want to do next is we're going to go through a series of spinal extension exercises to help address your spine. And this is going to help reduce the risk of back pain, right? Because with golfers, what happens is a lot of times you have to eliminate your golf game because you got to go to the chiropractor, you got to go to the physio because you hurt your back. This will help address those issues, giving you a more resilient back so that way you, don't, you basically don't have to leave the game. What we want to do is address that. We're going to just come into spinal extension, driving those shoulders up into that crossbar. Holding once again, 10 seconds, 10 reps. For the pulsing, pulse, 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 right? Less than a second. But you want to think, generate good amounts of force in less than a second. Last two exercises, spinal rotation. So what we want to do, we want to address the backswing first, right? So we're going to rotate to the right, 10 seconds, you know, next exercise, rotate to the left. And that's going to help with that follow through. Those are 10 exercises, actually nine exercises you guys can do at home. Now it really helps if you do have an ISOFIT strength trainer, because a lot of those movements are hard to restrain with a wall or a power cage or any other methods you would traditionally do isometrics, because realistically you can do it anywhere just not as quickly and as easily as you can on an isofit. So, key takeaways today. Golf is an amazing sport. You need strength and stability in order to perform at an optimal level well into your 80s and 90s. Because rate of force development is absolutely huge and you gotta practice your golf game. You gotta get out there, you gotta swing, but you gotta be strong and stable or otherwise golf is gonna rip you apart. As much as we want to like to think golf is an exercise, it's a velocity-based sport that most people are ill-prepared to do. Isofit and isometric-based exercise is the best way to prepare for golf. Then you got to go practice. I will see you guys next week in the next edition of Zero Velocity.